Good morning. Welcome to Equity Story Wednesday, the 2nd of August. Uh, and we've got, I'm actually quite honored to have Claude here because I didn't think he was actually going to be here with uh, the birth of his second child Im imminent. So thank yeah. you for joining me. Um, we are going to talk about today, thought of the week. Uh, and thank you for joining again because, you know, it's always a little bit easier to talk when there's two of us. Talk That's about my pleasure, Peter. We, we always have a productive time. I know, I know. And we talk about fundamentals. Thank God for that. <laughs> anyway, we've got August, which is the reporting season. So I thought I'd throw the question out. What do you think is going to report well, or at least give us some positive updates? Uh, and, I've, you know, the reason why I asked that, because there's, there's obviously already a couple of companies this morning come up with upgrades, right, to the earnings, which is quite interesting. So uh, we could talk about those as well, but we want to see other to find more of those sort of stories that we can possibly be on uh, and trade or at least invest into. So before before that, I've got the equity story um, disclaimer in front of you. Of course, everything is general advice only. Uh, any stock we talk about, it is based on fundamentals and technicals only. Now, let's swap the screen first of all. That's the first thing I need to do because what I need to show you is what happened last night uh, in, on the Dow uh, and NASDAQ. So you've got the screen in front of you. I've got um, S&P down 0.27, NASDAQ down 0.25. That was up 20. Uh, so it was fairly mixed, but there was nothing, no, really no specific news because when you go to the calendar uh, right there, there was really not much news on Tuesday. Uh, obviously, we had the Arbor Red Precision yesterday at 2.30, which was quite positive, of course, for the markets. Uh, here in Australia, where pause, right? Another pause. Hopefully, that will continue from now on. Uh, but... You, a US style, nothing really to get excited about. So if I actually go back again, sorry, see that what else is coming out over the next couple of days, it's actually pretty quiet. Uh, the only other one that's really of note, I think will be Friday. And I've got an unemployment rate and non-farm payrolls in the US uh, and an RBA statement policy here in Australia. So fairly quiet. So hopefully it'll be a decent week this week. Uh, so get back in here again, what the earnings in the US happens. So we've got advanced AMD up 4%, 4, nearly 5% up to hours, which was nice. I think Uber was down 5.7, Starbucks was 0.3. It's a bit of profit taking in, in on the NASDAQ. Um, and again, if you look through the economy, some of the stuff that they're talking about, uh, China manufacturing. And this is what the, the US one came up with today. Well, last night I had a look at uh, which was, hang on, this morning actually was the manufacturing PMI was actually fairly weak, um, which is probably good in a good and bad in a way, uh, because of course the US is probably looking at a still a good economy, but they don't want to be too super hot because then inflation might pick up again. So in a way, it's not bad. It's actually moved up from 46 to 46.4, but it was below forecasts and consensus. So we'll see how the market sort of looks at it tonight. All right, so um, moving from that, I want to talk about quickly some of the announcements this morning. So I'm going to flick through now to uh, the Reuters so we can have a look at some of the company charts uh, and see what they said this morning. So here we go with that one. So I'm going to start with last night's result. Uh, well, not a result. It was actually an announcement saying that they're going to get a takeover offer from um, SLC, Superloop. So Symbian. Symbio, not Symbian, sorry, Symbio uh, came out and said uh, that SLC is going to offer them some money. And I think the price was, doo -doo 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 -doo, where was it? Well, I think I saw it here somewhere, 290 something, I think. Uh, let me see. So 285, the pr pr proposed purchase price of 25 when aggregated with the 15%, 15 cents per share from the release of the franking credits for the special dividends. All right, so and, combined... and, that, and that available in some mixture of uh, stock and shares, I think, but that's sort of not guaranteed and, and can be uh, st subject to scale back. Yeah, so look, I, I, I'm not sure. Do you actually follow the company SYM at all? Sure. Yeah, I do. I do. I followed it for a really long time. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it was a bit of a grab bag of various um, telco assets. In the last couple of years, it's really honed in on, I guess, uh, it's wholesale operations. So it, uh, if you use Zoom or say Skype to call a mobile phone, Zoom or Skype or whatever it is, they need some way of like joining the telecommunications network mm -hmm. um, and, and using VOIP to call an actual phone. 
So, and also they need a number themselves to be able to call the phone. So when Uber calls you, or actually, I know one of your favorite companies, car sales, uh, with that, you can log on to the website, you can contact seller and that uses Symbio to like, you know, anonymously connect you with um, someone on their mobile phone without telling you the phone number of that person that you're calling. So uh, that's kind of the connectivity that they've been selling. Obviously that's like fairly low margin, but also it's like really high demand, fairly recurring revenue. So that has been growing uh, year in, year out. It's business to business. It's a sort of business to business um, software-esque functionality in that it does have to integrate. However, obviously it's pretty easy to swap out. So it's not like high margin software or anything like that. It's not sticky in the same way that um, a software that, because it's very much just the, the technical connectivity, it doesn't affect the users if you change from Symbio to somebody else. So therefore that's always going to be a bit of a commodity uh, agreement. Um, so it was kind of interesting company for that reason. Like basically uh, you could see that it had this growth tailwind that other telecommunications companies don't. And it sold a lot of the profitable parts of its business and they weren't really growing very much. And they're actually more in keeping with, I guess, uh, Superloop's main retail businesses. Mm -hmm. So it's not super, like there's always going to be some uh, level of synergies because Superloop has a retailer and it also owns assets. So like um, wholesale connectivity assets. So there's always a little bit of synergies when you combine these kind of companies because you can move, say, Symbio's traffic over to Superloop networks. Um However, it, it's not obvious to me that why they would be doing this. It's, it's just very disappointing. You can see the Symbio share price there. They had so much potential on their own. It's pretty mind-blowing that they're now considering a takeover at $2.85. I just really lost respect for the board as a result of this. Um, so if this doesn't go through, I'll never be buying um, back into Symbio. Mm. Uh, I think that for them to uh, be considering a takeover at 285 when they were once, you know, had the stock at $7, just, I mean, it wasn't even that long ago. It was like a year and a half ago. So I don't know what they're doing. I had great respect for the founder, um, but I guess he has lost his pizzazz for the business if he want, if he's entertaining this takeover offer. Yeah. Um, which means it's pretty much end of story for Symbio as far as I'm concerned, you know, and fair enough. This guy took the business from nothing to where it is today. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a 15 cent stock once. Like they did a good job, but they did lots of changes, buying, selling. They bought stuff, then sold stuff. You know, I think maybe it seems to me, look, and he's a big shareholder, obviously, and, and another founder is on the board as well. So these takeover discussions wouldn't be going anywhere if those guys didn't, you know, have an interest in it. Now we may see them turn around and say, look, forget about it. We're advising against it. Yep. Cause I don't think, um, you know, we've had any response from the board. If yep. that's the case, then that would make me feel, oh, okay. Well, Symbio is still an interesting kind of little company because if anything, then you've just got a situation. Well, SLC has come forward and said, well, we think Symbio is undervalued. And if the actual management do still have their, um, passion for running the business and the and the founders and stuff, then I think they'll say no to selling out at this price. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, but overall, the reason Symbio has got so low is basically because, yeah, they sold off their more profitable businesses. They're investing a lot in growth in Southeast Asia. It's a decent plan. They've built this business in Australia with the connectivity, like I described earlier for, you know, Uber or car sales or whoever needs it. They want to expand that into Southeast Asia. They already have massive international um, wholesale assets. So they've got connectivity like all around the world internationally. So they can do that. Uh, they just need to get that uh, local presence uh, so they can start offering and rolling out the, the product there, which uh, has, of course, taken longer than you expect. And generally speaking, you know, organic overseas expansion tends to be more expensive and slower than uh, people hope. And of course, that's why we've seen the share price come down massively. Um, in terms of Superloop, I think there's an asset play there. I'm surprised to see Superloop engaging in a takeover um, and using their shares as a currency at about 66 cents per share. Um, to put that in context, the price to book ratio for Superloop is 0 0.76. So supposedly at uh, 66 cents per share, you know, they're basically issuing shares 
to buy something else at less than the net asset value. Uh, I think it really shows that this is a management team that has no idea other than to buy other companies that are better. Uh, that's what they've done with, uh, I forget the name now, that they bought a retailer, quite a well-known one in the last couple of years. Uh, and I'm trying to remember what the name of it is. Uh, they bought My Republic. They bought, um, or oh, I'm trying to remember the big one that really kicked off, uh, kicked it off for them. But, I, but yeah, I'm blanking. Cool aggregator in that telco space, right? You know, yeah. There's plenty of these around. Yeah. So they've got some infrastructure, and then they're, so they're buying retailers to put the retailer to to take you know run the retailers of the business, and um, put uh, their traffic on their network. So. It can make sense. There can be some synergies in this in this approach, but just generally speaking, it looks to me like this is a business mostly run for the benefit of management. A uh, classic example of that is that you have the company simultaneously buying back shares, but also then trying to use its shares as currency. Just completely incongruent. Um, makes zero yeah. sense. Like, are your shares cheap? Cheap or are they expensive? You've got to kind of pick a lane. They don't got to pick a lane really. They just want to build out their empire, and that's what they're doing. So definitely more interested in Symbio longer term, but Superloop's an asset play. So if it got really cheap, I'd happily buy it. Okay. So anyway, just let me look through. So this is an acquisition of Arcurus in May 2022. Uh, then they got another one, Vostronet, um, in 20, uh, September 2022. Uh, then we've got, uh, there's another one, My Republic, like you said, here in 2022, December. Uh, what else did they get? So they're just just a quick acquiring. I mean, that's how they're growing by the looks of things. There's not, I'm not sure how much how much organic growth they've got, um, Claude, but it doesn't look like much. No, no, you definitely don't want to be paying a paying a, a growth multiple for this company. You just want to be paying it, um, yeah, yeah, cheap, cheap. Right. So just just on, taking, yeah, go on. I've never seen more of a company that seems to have like no congruent plan, completely lost its way. Exitel is the one that I was thinking of, which was the uh -huh. big um, broadband retailer it bought. Like just absolutely, it's just absolutely just financial wizardry, this company. It has it doesn't seem to have any kind of um, reason that it would have a competitive advantage or uh, anything going for it in terms of quality. I'd say, you know, not very well uh, yeah, just not attractive at all. But for the right price, absolutely, because it's um, got a lot of assets and um, it does have operating, you know, it does have cash flows and stuff. So it's definitely worth something. You just have to get it cheap. Yeah, I agree. Look, just let me look at the charts, right? So first of all, SLC, been a dog, uh, you know, on this acquisition, would I be getting it? No. Um, if you look at, if you look at uh, SYM, it's, if you didn't, if you, if there was no takeover, you'd be buying this chart. <laughs> Was breaking up, but you know that there's there's a takeover, of it, so you wouldn't be touching it. Uh, and you know, if you look at the actual structure of the deal uh, right here, it is a bit of cash, a bit of script, like you said. So I think that 142 in cash, 2.41 Superloop shares of each Symbio share. So you know, it's it, yeah. And the other thing is here, it is non indicative. Well, it's indicative, non-binding. So and there's not basically the, the management saying, look. We're just going to the early days. They have to do the due diligence. Do not take any action, pretty much. So we'll see. I mean, this is not, a, not even a done deal yet. So for me, let's see what happens. Let's move on to the next one. Um, I want to quickly have a look at WA1 because they've come up with an announcement uh, saying that they've drilled the four holes that they've said they're going to drill at that P2. Um, problem is, when I say problem, is there is no actually uh, results as for this thus far. It is just basically talking about that they've drilled the holes. They can see similar type, um, you know, mineralization that they've seen it at the original hole that they've drilled. So that's what the four, the four follow-up drill holes were done just to test it to see how big this might be, if there's continuity in some of these holes. It seems like it is, but it's just preliminary in nature at this stage saying, or visual, right? If they're taking it to the labs, we need the, we need the results. So. You know, the market's probably going, well, come on. There's probably no point even saying anything. Just wait till we release the actual results and we can get it from there. So it's coming back to the trend lines. If you're a day trader, you'd be holding that 550, probably 545 and you're out. Maybe 547, something like that would be out. Uh, on the back of that, it finishes at the end of the day. Otherwise, you're holding. Long term, it hasn't been a great week, I have to say. I mean, that's 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 not a, that's not a great week, down 13%. But still, uh, long term, all the results we've seen so far have been very, very good. 
Uh, still waiting, obviously, for the proper assay results to come through. So whole all around, CDA is the next one. Um, Claude, and you can probably comment on that one if you want. Uh, and they've got an acquisition. They went to the trading hold yesterday, coming up with an acquisition today, picking up a business in the UK. Uh, but, you know, it's saying they expected to contribute marginally to Coden's profitability, FY20 profitability. So it's like one of those long-term type buys. What do you think? Did you see it? Uh, I had a quick look. I uh, have stopped co following Coden quite so closely. Uh, yeah, look, it it's not something that would be changing my the thesis massively. It, it achieved um, a, the acquiring acquired company Eagle uh, achieved a bit through approximately three million mm. in a year. Uh, so even though it seems like it's probably fine little uh, add on acquisition, it's probably not a massive game changer that I would that I could see. Yeah, I agree. No, look, I think it's just a little bit of, yeah, look, uh, just the Bolton acquisition to act to this Zetron um, business that they've got. So that, fair enough. I don't think the market will react too positive, well, too br brilliantly today. And it hasn't uh, up 1.21 for the week. So fairly muted. All right, let's move on to the next one. It's still holding the trend. So if you are in this as a, as a trade, it's still a hold technically. Uh, let's move on to the next one, which is... DRO and they've announced that they've had some sort of interest from the other um, business unit. Um, and when I say business unit, they've actually other um, technology that they've actually doing. And that is drone shield launches area specific satellite denial systems, right? So I'm just gonna bring it up here so you guys can have a look. Uh, and it's had a little bit of a bounce today. Let me just go back again and just give you the daily so you can see exactly what's happening today. Um, today's up. 6.8 or 6.7% on the back of this little announcement. So pleased to announce a launch initial order from defense customer for its target area specific satellite denial. So they're saying it doesn't mean much at all uh, financially at this stage, but at least it's interesting to they see they are seeing that there's some interest in this technology. So potentially it could mean something that they lay that on the track. All right, let's move on to the next one, uh, CXL. Uh, and I want to have a look at the share price here. Uh, to, to, to CXL, yep, Calix. Let's have a look. So these guys are not training too, too well at all. So you're probably going to be touching them at the moment, but I just want to have a quick look at this announcement. So final decision has been made. I think they're talking about this with PLS for the construction administration plan to produce value added lithium product in Falgangura. So these guys have always been super expensive for me. Um, so really, you know, doing pilot plants and everything is all good and well, which is part of the progress of where they want to get to. Uh, it's end game, but it doesn't mean much because, of course, commercialization is still going to be a long way away. All right, let's move on to the next one. HLO. Uh, so a couple of good ones in a moment. This is the ones that come up with the profit upgrade. So HLO is one of them. Uh, and let's have a look at how these guys are going. And very, very good. So $3 is a bit of a resistance, as you can see. But the announcements probably may be good enough to push it a little bit higher, further down the road. Uh, and I'll bring it up here. You can have a quick look. Uh, did you have a look at this one, Claude, the HLO upgrade? I'll look just very quick one, just because uh, I find it always obviously interesting to see how the uh, travel stocks are going generally can be a little bit of an indicator on the overall economy. Uh, look, obviously, the good news here is an upgrade. Peter, I didn't actually look how much it was an upgrade. Well, it's 38 though. to 42 previously. Yeah, okay. So a nice little 10% upgrade. Thanks for filling that in. So that's positive. 10% uh, upgrade probably is enough size to suggest that actually they did come in a little stronger than they thought. Uh, generally speaking, you know, if something's a 2 or 3% upgrade, it, it might just be, oh, they were sandbagging when they come up with the original thing. They're just being a bit safe. So, uh, yeah, that's good to see. They also had positive forward outlook about FY2024, which implies that as of now, they're still seeing good uh, travel, obviously, that can be a combination of business travel, government travel, or, or leisure travel. So probably le leisure travel is the biggest uh, one in terms of what it says about the economy. But uh, overall, uh, the... Yeah, I've lost you there for a sec. Sorry, sorry there, my dog just uh, lost his mind. Uh, he's being very yappy this morning. Uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, I basically think that as for, as for this stock, uh, obviously that bodes well for the actual trade. It's totally possible that you'll get uh, a little firming of that outlook. 
um, when you get the results. So it could be a matter of, okay, they're going to deliver the results if the results are good on all the devil in the details side of things, not just a bit obviously, but bottom line cash flow, et cetera, et cetera. If all that's looking good and they have um, a bit more, you know, of a solid outlook, then as in they give them a few more numbers around that and that kind of thing, then I think uh, you could definitely, that could be the event that pushes through that $3 mark, which obviously the stock's been uh, hard to get over. Personally, don't see the valuation myself. Don't, don't, don't not excited about any of the travel stocks. Uh, same as retail, but we've seen a huge rebound in retail and travel. And I think that that's really reflective of the fact that the chances of the global economy going into a recession have gone down. Um, and I still think we see softening even if we don't get a recession. So I don't know why people are so excited about these, you know, absolutely edge of the cliff stocks, but just because I don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't work. Like, especially well, if you're trading They're coming well. up with decent updates at the moment, right? So you're thinking yeah, exactly. Credit, exactly. And there's a little bit of tailwinds behind them. So, you know, the market is- and It's all about the change. It's about the change in view. You know, people go from being really negative to just like more neutral and then you get the share price lift. So- that's totally uh, something that we're, I think we're seeing and that's probably a, still your thesis. There still is a fair bit of negativity around in terms of people are worried on your left about, you know, inflation on your right about a recession. It's yeah. like, it's this weird, it's, it's, either, it's either horrible and no one's happy or it's Goldilocks and it's perfect kind of thing. And yeah, the I, market I, doesn't know what, you know, the market is definitely taking more of that Goldilocks view of things because I think that, the argument for a recession has has reduced and realistically I, well, what we could be heading towards i mean certainly in australia is just a situation where um you know inflation doesn't get down to where it used to be but it gets down a little bit and um as a result the reserve bank just lets it run a bit high and you don't get a recession yeah fair enough look the chart is pretty good i have to say so if you're in this as a trade you maybe bought it on this or maybe you're still holding from this one when we put it up hold i think uh, i think the trade's still on fundamentally though peter because what I we're agree. just seeing left right and center is these retailers and these um travel stocks rebounding and that's the sharp end of the you know the sharp end of it when it comes to a recession risk so it, it, as long as we keep on heading in this direction of less recession risk this trade's still on yeah i agree all right so um next one psi and again another one that's this morning come out with an upgrade to the previous update that they've had and it's responded very positively. It's up um, a few percent here. Let me just have a look on a daily. What's what they actually? It's up three and a half percent. And for the week, obviously there was a bit of talk because it's up six and a half percent for the week. So it actually looked like maybe building up towards a buy signal as well. So this looks very very good. Uh, middle of the week, I have to say. PSI, tell me a little bit about PSI. If you, did you see that update this morning? Yeah, I did have a quick look, Peter. Obviously, this is one that I follow quite like it. Insurance broking, uh, good business, a business that should do okay in this slightly higher inflation environment that we're just talking about. Um, and also shouldn't be too threatened by a recession either uh, because, uh, you know, the insurance that they sell is by and large, you know, one of the last things you'd cut. And in fact, for a lot of the professional indemnity stuff, you can't cut it. So um, yeah, good, good little business there. Obviously, it's the price that is the sticking point. And I don't think it's crazy. The The main leap you've got to take is you've got to accept NPAT A um, rather than N NPAT with, with the A being um, partially the, uh, it's, it's difficult because the NPAT A figure they give or underlying NPAT A they use. Partially, it's kind of legitimate because it's the amortization of acquisitions, which is sort of a non-cash cost and, it, and it's eventually will go away as well. Um, or at least relating to each specific acquisition, it will reduce as the acquisitions become a smaller part of the total uh, earnings pool um, and they get you know amortized off. But it also underlying excludes a few other things that I wouldn't necessarily exclude, like the cost of doing the acquisition. Well, they always do acquisitions, so that costs you to stay. And also, I think they might strip out some sort of stock rule, stock award stuff, which is a, a, a real cost. So overall, um, the quality of their earnings in terms of the actual statutory NPAT falls well short. So for that reason, I sometimes am and think I'd prefer, say, steadfast, that 
really does trade at a, at a similar earnings multiple, but probably has slightly higher quality earnings. Then the flip side of it is actually, well, the disadvantage of Steadfast over something like PSC Insurance Group is PSC Insurance is smaller, so there's more chance they can keep on using acquisitions um, to grow. And, and But of course, then the other side of it is Steadfast has a probably stronger balance sheet. So overall, hard to pick between uh, these guys, AUB and Steadfast, but I would say like, you know, this little result uh, so far, small little upgrade, not massive, but um, definitely positive for the se sector and the stock in particular. And yeah, it's one I already liked before this, still like it now. Having said that, we're talking about a two and a half percent upgrade to EBITDA, so and and underlying EBITDA as well, which is hardly hardly the metric that matters the most. Um, so that's not that great. The um, other thing that they put out is the, a midpoint of their FY twenty twenty two option, which was about one hundred and twenty five million EBITDA. Now they're talking about one hundred and eleven million EBITDA at the moment uh, for FY twenty twenty three. So that means that uh, that, that, that we're talking about growth of 12% in a bit, the 12.6% a bit, that's organic growth. So that's, that's a good thing out of it as well. That's probably what you're, if you're going to say, oh, and I don't know, like, I like this announcement. It's a good announcement. Hmm. And if I was going to say, oh, and now as a, as a result of this announcement, I'll buy the main, and I haven't decided, you know, Peter, I looked at this just a few minutes before, yeah. Of, yeah. obviously we're on the call. But, you know, the, the thing that makes me like it is, well, it's just that growth rate that it's implying. They're basically saying we're expecting about 10, 12% organic growth. Yep. That's the interesting thing because, again, like I said, if you are willing to accept the um, NPAT A they put out as a proxy for earnings, which is the, the hanging point for me, but if you are, then 12.5% organic growth is going to be pretty good because we're talking... Um, low twenties of that NPAT A number. If that goes up twelve percent on its own, then even organic growth would probably, in the end, justify this this um, stock. And the, given the likelihood that they'll get some um, accretive uh, earnings, accretive acquisitions in there as well, that means you're probably going to get a bit of a bonus someday, and you're probably going to get outperformance. Yeah. Now, look, I, I, to me, it doesn't matter how small the upgrade is. It, at least it shows that these guys are on top of their financials uh, and, and, you know, they, they are giving you what you want plus a little bit more, which is, I'm, that's all I'm happy about, right? That I'm happy with the, with the easy stuff because if you, if you give me a big upgrade, I mean, thinking, what are you doing? I mean, do you know your own business? <laughs> you know, what? It's almost like trying to bait you. Um, but look, I like it because it's, it's 10%, like you said, 10 to 12%. percent I'm, I'm happy with that. I think this is a buy, to be honest. When you look at it on the charts, this looks pretty good. I think the whole sector, like you said, looks very, very good. SDF, AUB, uh, PSC, PSC, it's still a buy. Um, yeah. So that, well done on that one. Um, the last one I quickly want to mention is CNB before we move on to our thought of the week. Uh, and they just had, they just basically announced today that they are farming into Rio Tinto's ground, uh, which is interesting. Normally the big ones, the big boys are farming the small smaller boys but this this little boy is moving in the big boys crowds which is quite interesting so anyway um let's see what happens there uh and markets look like uh let me see if the markets actually moved on this today uh and yeah four percent that's not too bad so just put it back on the weekly and i know we had a couple of questions regarding this um on i stand saying what should we doing here Remember, we always want to wait for the end of the week to see how these things finish, because this is not a bad explorer in a copper space, and copper copper has been going quite well recently. We want to have a few little stocks that we can trade from here and there whenever it uh, you know would require us to do so. So yeah, wait till the end of the week. It's not growing, going great. So if it's sort of like this, you're probably selling, but it might creep over that 112, 113 and be okay again. So Friday, two more days to go. Hold for now. Um, Okay, I think that's all covered for the announcements. Uh, let me just double check. There's nothing else just popped up while we're talking. Uh, I'll put that on and just see if there's any announcement right there. Um, you got CHL come up with the numbers as well, I think. Let's have a quick look. I know you like this one. Uh, let me see, activities, additional information. All right, we won't, we won't go through that. Let's go to our thought of the week. I'll look at it tomorrow. Um, let's have a look through the thought of the week. And I pose the question to you what do you think of course is going to be delivering good news for the shareholders during august reporting slash updating season 
So I'll let you go first. Um, give me your stock, please. Look, it's a bit of a small one, Peter. So, you know, with caution for anyone out there, just a $37 million stock, 37, 38 million, mm -hmm. uh, called Cirrus Networks, uh, CNW is the ticker. And uh, look, what they do is managed IT services. And they already gave out their guidance that basically said um, that they should have uh, a pretty a pretty decent a little profit uh, this year. Now, what they did do is um, uh, they they just you know gave the, the key headlines. They gave uh, they said that they're going to have um, a net profit before tax for FY twenty twenty three of three million. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you just apply a normal uh, tax rate to that, that's about two point one million in net profits after tax. And the, the market cap, as I said, is like 38 million. So this is uh, on about 18 times earnings. Now that actual earnings result was up strongly, um, up strongly on the year before. So it's really just absolutely stormed past. I'm hoping that, uh, well, I believe that it's quite likely that they've withheld some of the, some of the good news uh, uh, for the full year. Uh, they actually did give a lot already. So that's why I kind of say, I think uh, that it is going to be a good results because they've basically come out and said it's going to be good results. Now you see in the little spike there, the Sirius Network stock went crazy the other day. Um, because and <laughs> literally just because of some random announcement they put out, it wasn't even marked market sensitive. You could say that they were being a little bit hypey, a little bit promotional, but I don't think anyone reasonable would have expected to see the um, share price spike on the announcement they put out. And, and and it mentioned a collaboration with NVIDIA. So I wonder if there was just some algos picked it up and it was like buy or whatever. I think the um, word NVIDIA, you know, it, it's one of those hot names. Like Rudo, Rudo. <laughs> NVIDIA, 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 AI, AI, AI. AI, AI. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Superconductor, yeah. Superconductor. <laughs> Precisely, precisely. <laughs> All you have uh, to say is an NVIDIA name and your stock goes up. <laughs> like incantations. Anyway, look, so I said, I look, I actually downgraded it to hold when it spiked. Mm -hmm. um, but I said when I downgraded it to hold that I would sort of consider it a buy sort of under 4.2 cents, which is kind of where it's come back to around 4.1 cents. So it's just on the on the edge of where I, I think that the valuation's there. Obviously, it's not as cheap as it could be. But the thing is, you know, the growth that it's had is is phenomenal uh and the improvement and it claims it's got a turnaround you, you know it's claims it's turnaround complete it's claims it's on a good track um and honestly it does happen and look what more do you want than the actual um the results to come in so my guess is that the uh full year announcement for these guys will be good not sure quite sure how much the share price will actually move on that but either way like if they continue on their path, then then I think that it, it's a good one and and I hold shares and I like it. And I mostly, you know, I would probably consider, you know, I'll sharpen my pencil a little more once we get the actual accounts because that's when you could see something uh, bad, but you also could see a lot more commentary around where the business is positioned and what the outlook is from here. So that could be positive. All right. So apart from this craziness here with NVIDIA, right, I think there's a good looking chart here. Um, and reflecting that obviously there's probably a step change to the business recently, uh, Claude. So that I think it sort of collaborates the share price movements, collaborates your story uh, with the fundamentals, which is nice. So I think, yeah, around the 4.1, you'd be probably looking buying if you believe that there's going to be a decent result coming, right? And you can probably take it at 4.5, maybe 5 cents over the next six to, tw six to 12 months. So I think that all makes perfect sense for me. So thank you for that. Um, I'm going to go a little bit safer, maybe a little bit boring, but I'm going with the company called Car Sales. And we know, first of all, that the chart is absolutely great because it's broken up um, this week. All right. So where is it? Whoops. Car Sales. Yeah. So it's actually looking pretty good on the charts. But I want to show you the reason why I think it's going to come up with a pretty good result. It's up to 0.66% this week. I know I had a bit of a pullback today. That's okay. Uh, let me just show you the, uh, that's, I think, February result. Whoops. February results. Uh, and this is why I think they're going to deliver pretty good positive numbers. Uh, and if I go back to car, I'll show you why I picked this one as my favorite. 
Uh, and first of all, we've seen the car sale numbers are pretty good. They have been pretty good for the for the six months since they reported in February. We saw the numbers for the electric cars being very, very strong. But this is what was interesting for me. So the media release in February, I'll put it out, you can have a look. Uh, they are talking, and this is about the actual, finan not financial results, the actual forward-looking numbers. Uh, and here, we can we go, where are we, where are we, where are we? Outlook, here we go. So, um, Actual basis results, we expect to deliver very, very, very strong growth in adjusted revenue, adjusted EBITDA, and adjusted NPAT, FY23. So, I mean, this already strikes, gives you to that they're looking for a pretty good period ahead. Um, so, pro forma basis, also good growth, right, overall. Uh, remember, they had that acquisition of that uh, business in the US, which is going quite well, apparently. The other thing that's very, very important for me is looking at those margins. And we expect to see max expansion in the car sales group, adjusted EBITDA margin on both pro forma and actual basis. This tells you that they've got leverage to the business. Uh, I like it overall. I think this is well positioned. We talked about it enough. And I know, you, Claude, you have got a little bit of soft spot for this company, even maybe it's a little bit big for you. But I just like this company from the fact that it's got a really strong position here in Australia, good position in, in, in Asia as well, and a little bit of um, overseas as well. So overall, I like this. I think in the long term, you know, those sort of mature, supposedly mature, tech businesses in Australia that are actually profitable, I can still see them going higher and being, you know, very good. I, I, you know, and I'm happy with that 10 to 20%. I'm, I'm not greedy here with looking at 50% growth because this is probably X that easy growth now. I'm just happy to see that 10, 10, 15% growth year on year, year on year, year on year. If it can deliver me that, I'll be very, very happy with uh, the likes of car sales and some of the other stuff in, the, in, in that sort of space. And like I said, you know, car sales not my only stock story like that you've got you know your real estate.com you the early ones they're from the from the guys from that original boost and boom and bust uh in, in that space right with the real estate uh car sales seeks um there's probably a couple of others in there uh that we can mention but that's the sort of companies i like to follow um where i think there's you know, a decent company it's got a moat around it uh and you know it's dominating it, most of its uh jurisdictions that are actually in and business units so I, I'm thinking they're going to really have a good result. And if you, like I said, if you've got an opportunity to get some, that was a buy signal last week. I don't think it's still too late, uh, if, especially if you're looking for the long term, uh, this potentially going to 26 and plus over the next 12 months or so. So that's my sort of tip for a strong result. We'll probably have a look at a gain next week. Claude, same thing, same deal again. We're going to look for a couple of more companies that can deliver good results. So thank you so much for joining me. I think we'll call it a day. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, have a great day. Have a great day, everyone. And so again, see you again tomorrow and Friday for us, the analyst. Great. Thanks a lot, Peter. Have a good day, everybody. Cheers. Thank you.